Adding repair services to your jewelry business is a great way to not only increase profitability, but also generate additional revenue. We know that the more foot traffic that you get, the more jewelry you're gonna sell, and repair brings people in. Not only that, when you do jewelry repair, people are more apt to buy jewelry from you because they know that you're gonna take care of the product throughout the lifetime of the piece. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about what a basic repair bench looks like. First and foremost, you've got your bench. Uh, this is all gonna be about process management, organization, and cleanliness. So you wanna make sure that something's gonna be ergonomic to fit what you like, but also has enough drawers and storage spaces so that you can keep all your tools neat and organized. Second up, we have our chair. Our chair is really gonna be where you spend a lot of the time working at the bench, so you want something that's adjustable, something that's gonna form fit to exactly what you need, uh, and that's gonna be specific, that's gonna be a little bit different for, for every individual person. Next up, we have our light. You gotta have a good lamp that's gonna give you the ample, uh, the adequate lighting that you need so that you could see the little parts and pieces that you're gonna be working on. Additionally to that, because you're working on small parts and pieces, you might want something like a little optivizer, something to give you some good magnification so that you can see what you're working on. Next up, you can use something like a laser welder or a pulse arc welder to actually do the welding, uh, but every jeweler at the end of the day is gonna need a torch. We have our standard torch, just really the basic thing that you think about uh, in a standard jeweler's torch. This is gonna use a compressed fuel, something like propane or acetylene or natural gas, uh, as well as a compressed tank of oxygen. Now, this is a useful tool, but it's not always uh, available to you if you work in a place where the building restrictions don't allow you to have uh, compressed gases in the facility or you're cramped for space. So another option that we have is this hydrogen torch here. Now, this hydrogen torch is very useful, not only because it doesn't use those compressed gases, but it's also very a very small and controllable flame and a very clean weld overall. Um, so this is very interesting, very cool. It actually turns water into fire and allows you to do your uh, brazing or uh, welding with this torch. And with either of these, you could either use a standard lighter or you can use a fire starter that's battery operated such as this. Going a little bit further into the bench, as you're welding, you're gonna need your uh, soldering tools. So your actual soldering pick and third hand, as well as your soldering board. Uh, this is gonna allow you to work hands-free and use the torch in one hand, the soldering pick in the other, while the soldering, the third hand, actually holds the ring for you. Uh, once you're done, and you've, uh, you have your flux here, of course, for through the process, but once you're done with the soldering, um, there might be a little bit of fire scale, a little bit of oxidation that's built up. Uh, you have your pickle pot right here with your copper tongs. You can just dunk that right in, and it'll get a lot of that cleaned off. Now, some hand tools that you're gonna be using throughout the process are gonna be of course, your files, your, uh, your uh, pliers, there's a, a bunch of different pliers, a wide assortment of pliers that you can use, and, and a lot of different jobs that you can use them for. Um, and then you're gonna have your saw. So your saw is gonna be super important as you're cutting into metal, uh, cutting into rings, you know, sizing up, sizing down. And then you're gonna have your bench block that you can use with that. Right here we have a customized bench block. It's pretty neat. It's actually already cut here so that you could put the ring shank right there with the head down, and then you have a little divot so that you can actually uh, cut through it. And next up for our uh, sizing process, uh, you're gonna need a, a sizing mandrel as well as a steel forming mandrel. Uh, this is gonna allow you to get not only the right size that you need, but also the right shape with the help of our nylon uh, hammer here. Now, when you're going to be going either up or down a few sizes, it's really nice to use something like this, this little marker size. Uh, this allows you to select, say, three sizes or two sizes, or half sizes even, and quickly mark the amount of metal that you need to take out. Dividers really help with that same thing, and then your calipers are always gonna stay on your bench to allow you to measure exactly what it is that you're gonna be doing. So at this point, we've really talked about the tools and equipment that you're gonna need to perform the repair itself. Uh, really, we can focus here on the prep and finish work. Uh, at this point, you're gonna need some type of a rotary hand tool. Uh, so here we have our flex shaft or our micromotor. Flex shafts are a little bit more cost effective, but micromotors are going to be lighter, uh, a little bit easier to use overall. Uh, and then we're going to have our various types of polishing uh, or finishing buffs. So we have here very neatly organized 
all of the different things that we might need to do the cleanup and polish work. Uh, the more organized that you can get here, really the more efficient you can get. And the more efficient you can get, the, the more jobs you can get done. And, and finally, we're gonna have our vise here in the front. This is just gonna be a super useful tool for actually holding the piece as you're doing all the work and finishing and polishing up your repair. Essentially, this is what a basic repair bench can look like. Uh, obviously, everybody's bench is gonna look a little bit different, uh, which is why it's very important to figure out what works specifically for you and do as much research and learning as you can to make sure that you, you are setting yourself up for success in all your bench activities. Uh, if there's anything that we talked about here today that you wanna learn more about, or if you have any questions, please feel free to call our tools tech team at extension 4300 or visit us on Stellar.com and utilize our live chat feature.